species of veriform has been extinct since the Cretaceous period. I mean, this thing is a hunt. This thing. Why? What? beautiful okay so right apologies for that intro if you're new to this channel that is the level of quality and finesse you can expect from me on an almost weekly basis warning it doesn't get any better than that uh, now, so unless you've been living under a stone for the past 34 years, you will have heard of Jurassic Park and the six films the franchise has already spawned. There's another one coming in 2025, if you can believe it. But today I'm going to be reviewing the book upon which the whole thing was based, Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. So this was uh, first published in 1990, 34 years ago over in America. It wouldn't see the British Isles for another year in 1991. That's where my copy is from. And then the film came another two years after that in 1993. So let's have a little look at my copy, complete with all the creases and whatnot. That's a scan of it there. So yeah, the cover doesn't have a dinosaur in sight. Um, it was illustrated by a chap called John Bretoner. So he's focused primarily there on the island and the storm that ravages the park whilst they're all checking it out. So it's a kind of metaphorical uh, scenario there. Um, there's dark things going on, but yeah, no dinosaurs. It's a pity. The only, the only um, reference there is at the bottom, in the future, there will be dinosaurs. Um, however, I'm sure there's been many other covers over the years and various other countries that do feature dinosaurs. So I'm going to pop some others up as the review goes along. I also like to sniff my books prior, <laughs> prior to reviewing them. So um, I'm not going to do it today, though, because I've had two chest infections back to back. And I think if I get one more fecal spore down there, it'll probably be the end of me. Now, I could I would normally start here by saying what's the book all about, but you will know what it's about. It's more or less a carbon copy of what you saw in the film, almost scene for scene at times. Although the tone is different, the dialogue is different, and there's a, a few different things that are swapped around, but it's largely the same thing. And it all amounts to a cautionary tale about the perils of capitalism recklessly funding scientific research for monetary gain. And obviously when you're dealing with fucking great dinosaurs that will readily eat you if they can, you're kind of at the uh, sharp end of the stick with that model. Um, I should say as well that this is the very first Michael Crichton book I've ever read although I've seen a number of other films that have been based on his other books. Um, so what are the Andromeda Strain and what was it? The Sphere, that's another one. But yeah, first time I've actually read his writing. And I must say I was a little disappointed. I'm going to number the ways I was disappointed a bit later, but I will start by a little bit of uh, positiveness, I would say. It was very well researched, for one. Uh, the potential genetic technology that might allow these extinct animals to come back, that was really interesting. Um, he certainly did, did his background research there. And of course, we can't overlook the fact that the idea itself is wonderful. I mean, Putting, putting this idea of corporate greed, marrying it up to something that could potentially kill all of the people that go to see the park is a really brilliant idea. And you can see why this was made into a film. OK, so the first thing I was disappointed with is a direct comparison to the film, really, because personally, I mean, when it came out, I loved the film, the special effects primarily, I thought were amazing at the time, and they kind of still hold up now. However, it was given a PG-13 um, rating and was aimed primarily at families. And so very much like the corporate greed of the park, the filmmakers wanted to appeal to a, as wider audience as possible. That's understandable, obviously, but that did restrict what was possible, the, the horror and the brutality that might be possible, that I hoped would be in the book. 
And it started off really well. So we begin at the very beginning of the book, which doesn't feature in the film, where there's already been a migration of tiny uh, scavenger dinosaurs. I forget the, the name of them. But they, they've made it across the water from the island uh, to Costa Rica. And they are killing um, pets and uh, young children. And we, we see one at the very beginning attacking a young girl that's on a remote beach. And it's very dark at the beginning. I mean, there's even one bit where a young woman's just given birth and the, the child is in the, the kind of I don't know, incubator, perhaps. And a one of these bloody dinosaurs eats its face off. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't have had that in the film. So, yeah, I thought, crikey, yeah, this, this, is, this is the kind of film I wouldn't have minded watching. Not that I want to see children getting their faces bitten off, but, um, yeah, a slightly darker tone. And whilst there were certainly aspects of um, a, the darker side of things, you know, severed limbs and whatnot, the moment the children reared their ugly heads in this book, I kind, my heart kind of sank, really. Um, and I think you know the two children I'm talking about. You either love them or you hate them um, in the film. Uh, Lex and Timmy. Is it Timmy? <laughs> yeah. As soon as they appeared in the book, I thought, Christ, not again. Um, but I was always hopeful that they might bite the dust at some point. But do they hell? Of course, you can see the reasoning behind including children in settings of peril such as this. It increases the stakes to have vulnerable children at the mercy of dinosaurs that will readily bite their heads off. But if you thought Lex and Timmy were annoying in the movie, the book is going to make you want to throw the fucking thing out of the window. At one point, I was actually begging Crichton to kill off Lex during one of her more petulant episodes. But alas, the moment never came. They're attacked by a T-Rex. Their jeep is readily crushed and tossed up into a tree, of all things. They're attacked by pterodactyls, Lex is almost drowned, and they're also attacked by velociraptors, and they survive everything. In the movie, of course, it ta they take it to the next level, and poor Timmy gets 10,000 volts through him when, he, uh, <laughs> when he's on that fence designed to keep dinosaurs in their place. But Dear old Timmy just took it in his stride, just made his hair go up a little bit. You could shoot those two buggers into an active volcano and they would return moments later with slightly singed eyebrows and big grins on their smug faces. I just don't like it. I do not like it when children appear in these uh, films or in books because it's always ludicrous. It doesn't increase the, the stakes unless they fucking die <laughs> and then maybe it's okay. Now, children aside, it's children out of the picture, my next gripe is with the actual standard of the writing. And whilst it's serviceable and functional, it's nothing to write home about. I found myself all readily losing interest um, and I was turning the pages slower and slower. Despite, I mean, I knew what was coming, that did, probably didn't help, but the writing itself just left me cold. And I'm just gonna read you just a tiny example here. I just think it's poor. I just don't think it's anything special. So at this point, Lex, Timmy and Dr. Grant are in the, in this uh, dinghy on the river and they're, they're about to go over a, a waterfall. And this is how it's described. <sighs> and standing in the surging pool waiting for them was the Tyrannosaur. Lex was screaming in panic and then the boat spun and the rear end dropped away spilling them out into air and roaring water, and they fell, sickeningly. Grant flailed his arms in the air, and the world went suddenly silent and slow. That's the end of a, a passage. Uh, just rubbish. I, I think that's rubbish. The other problem, the, the other annoying thing is that Crichton appears to love cliffhangers. And you'll put them all over the bloody place. So there'll be about three in one chapter sometimes. And it's not long before the cliffhanger, you, you don't care about them anymore because the implied peril or the implied disaster that's awaiting these children usually, it never comes, you know. So it's always, <gasps> what's gonna happen next? But there's only so many times you do that before you get completely bored off your tits. Okay, so another thing, I mean, this isn't, this isn't a major gripe, but, you get a lot of this in the book. So you get various schematics, usually of computer screens. So at the time, perhaps it was 
an interesting thing to see technology that you wouldn't otherwise see in your home, perhaps. You've also got lots of graphs. You've got lots of tables. It's sprinkled all the way through it. Um, some of them work well. Some of them don't. Um, but there's so many of the damn things in there. It was just getting in the way of the story. OK, but I will give him a bit more praise uh, before I get to the rating. And that's the, the character development. I thought was pretty good, really. Um, so Dr. Grant, he came across quite well. I mean, it's very similar to the film, kind of quiet, uh, introspective uh, man who knows his onions, um, doesn't have children of his own, but feels a kind of paternal instinct to look after the children, despite the fact they're fucking annoying. The, the mathematician played by Jeff Goldblum had that same kind of quirky manner and the kind of irritating way he spoke even. And Hammond as well. That's another character that stuck out, the one played by Richard Attenborough, of course. Had that same... There was a likeable side of him, a merry, merry kind of side to him. Likeable. But at the same time, that darker side of him where, in the book, it, it gets to the point where he doesn't seem particularly bothered by the fact that his grandchildren are stranded somewhere in a park with dinosaurs ready to kill them. Perhaps he's similar to me in that he just wanted them dead, but, but at the same time that was one of the other things that was slightly disjointed about the book. It wasn't just Hammond, it was, it was everyone. No one seemed to really be that worried that the children and some of the, like Dr. Grant, were stranded in the park. It was, there wasn't much urgency. OK, anyway, right, this has taken me forever. Um, hopefully I've edited the shit out of this, but it's time to rate it. Um, so as you can probably imagine, it's not going to be too high. If I had read this at the time, I would have probably given it three or four stars out of five just because it was such it's such an original idea. But obviously we're suffused with the idea of, of dinosaurs now coming back from the dead and those other points I mentioned, the children primarily, but the, the standard of the writing being so low, I can't give it anything more than two stars out of five. OK, there we are. But um, yeah, Jurassic Park uh, still has legs. It, it would appear there's probably going to be no end of films coming down the pipeline. I'm not quite sure what else they've got to explore with the concept now. But it's more or less the same thing, isn't it? Keep going back to the island and keep running up against dinosaurs that want to kill them. In the book, incidentally, I mean, this is a spoiler, but I'm going to give it to you. At the end of the book, they nuke the island. <laughs> yeah, the military just come in and just bombard the bloody thing. You know, just erase it. I mean, that's what you would have to do because anything getting off the island would just completely mess up the uh, the ecology of wherever it went. I mean, God forbid uh, the raptors getting loose. I mean, yeah, I, I, was, I should have mentioned this earlier, really, but there's definitely a point in the story where the story could have easily gone into Ridley Scott's aliens territory with the raptors. I mean, you could kind of see that working through uh, Crichton's mind. Although, when did Aliens come out? I don't know if it was around then. But yes, similar scenario. These these raptors are bloody evil, devilish, fast, bastard killing machines. And they hunt in packs and all of that. So it, there was a point where it was tiptoeing into that territory. Oh, there's, an, there's a stupid scene uh, later on where they go into the, one of the nests. It's just bloody stupid. Anyway, Right, let's leave it there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with another video. Cheerio.